In part one of Homo Deus, Harari talks about how Homo sapiens has conquered the world. He says, we've become the single most important agent in change in the whole global ecology. As we move from our, our management of fire to the point where we are now traveling the, the, uh, the, the outer space, we basically have, have gotten off the path of natural selection. So, so he says, say, you know, sapiens, have we've written the rules of the game and we're no longer bound by imperatives with regards to natural selection. When you add to that the fact that this whole world also with our communication systems and our transportation systems, we basic, basically have also made the planet a single ecological unit. Right now, what, what he does is he adds to that the fact that also as sapiens, we, we, we basically look down on the a, uh, on animal species. And we, we started out first with the idea of us just being different. And we worked really hard on trying to, to, to define what it is that makes us different. And, and over time, one of the, the main candidates for that was the idea of us, of our emotions. And however, the, the idea of emotions making us different really didn't hold up to scientific investigation because once the science started doing investigation on the brain, they basically found that the brain houses both the rational and the emotional, and that it can be tied to algorithms, all right? And this is really an important idea, the whole idea of algorithms, which we'll talk about more and more. But, and Harari defines them as the mythological set of steps that can be used to make calculations, resolve problems, and reach decisions. That's what algorithms are. And these algorithms exist both for the Homo sapiens and also for the animal kingdom. And both of them use that to solve survival problems, and they both use it to solve reproduction problems. So the emotions are no longer considered the difference. So how about superior? Why do we feel like we're superior? What is our, that source of superiority? Well, some of it can be sourced into this idea of monotheism. Once we started developing monotheistic religions, we, we got ourselves into this a, uh, paradigm of a hierarchy in which we had God at the top, sapiens in the middle, and animals at the bottom. With this God at the top, we also kind of, in our myths, religious myths, we, we, he can do anything he wanted to do to us, right? And, and so what that led to is, is, is a, one of Harari's quotes is that, that it's power without responsibility is a strong component of the religious myth. That's a very important idea of power without responsibility. Because if you tie that to the idea of the hierarchy, which is a strong component of the mass cooperation myths, it basically gives us this link where we now have the whole idea of hierarchy, power, and responsibility kind of linked together. And a, again, this is something that we'll, that we'll be looking at in a little bit. The other thing is that animals, we didn't give them a soul. So we, had, we said animals don't have a soul. And that way, we kind of made them just beings, mere extras in the, in the, uh, in, in the story. And that's how we rationalize the terrible behavior that we have towards other species, even our domesticated species and some of our own species, like slaves. However, theory of evolution in 21st century biochemical science didn't hold up the idea of the soul, that any beings actually have the soul. Now, why does that matter so much? All right. And that one of the things is that he talks about one of the reasons is because when he looked at the possible tomorrows, and, and you look at the fact that, you know, we still have humans in the middle, if you will, and we have all others at the bottom. But at the top, we no longer have gods. We have these superhumans, and they live on the earth with us, which is different than most of the gods. And that kind of brings us what I call an uh-oh here, right? And that is that, you know, how do we, how do we get them to, to not annihilate us? Uh, you know, what, what, what kind of position are we going to present to them, the superhumans, to make it so that they keep us around? Now, on top of that, Harari says he thinks he has a better idea as to what makes us different. And he thinks it's myths. He talks about myths as being the single biggest factor in, in, a, in what makes us different. Because myths basically fuel our capability for mass cooperation. And that mass cooperation is basically how we are able to, to manage things. So he says, let's take a look. Objective reality exists for both sapiens and the animals. And subjective reality, we talked about that, that exists for both sapiens and the animals. But the myths provide this inner subjective reality. And this inner subjective reality is really a, a kind of the, a, a big differentiator for us. So sapiens are the only ones that have it. And it's, it's in our fictions and it's in our imagined realities. All right, so things like nations, things like corporations, things like gods, human rights, and money. These are all part of our fictions and imagined realities. And they are all currently 
becoming the single most potent force on Earth. This is kind of another one of the uh-ohs, because when you think about it, here we are, this, this species that uh, is, is very anxious. Because of our anxieties, it kind of makes us cruel. And we are insecure, and because of our insecurity, it kind of makes us dangerous. And, and here we are at the top of the food chain. And now we're building myths and, and, and stories and imagined realities, and, and we're using those to fuel our institutions, political, social, and economic institutions, and also as a big part of all of our artifacts. So things like our, our stories, even our fairy tales, our philosophy, our art, our architecture, our uh, music and, and our games, they're all kind of fueled by, by this, these myths. So our whole worldview is, is basically incorporates this aspects of our cruel and brutal origins. So we have to be careful because if we have this tie between hierarchy and power, and, and we don't have the level of responsibility. So, so this power without responsibility, it's also become a strong component of our mass cooperation myths. So, so that, that puts us in kind of a, a, a really a quandary, if you will. Anyway, that's where he covers. Thank you.